what is going on everybody? Knight of Coochie here, and this is the channel where I review anime shows and movies from years past and present. Oh my god, why was I given that fucking nickname? And to start things off, let's go back in time. A time where I was barely finishing my junior year of high school, and I was looking down on my phone, down here, instead of looking up at the camera like a man. Ah uh, yes, May of 2018. But anyway, this was during a point where I started up my channel, just started up, and I knew what I wanted to talk about, which was to review anime. But the problem was is that there was just so much anime to choose from. So before I put all the shows into a wheel, which I should probably update that if no one's going to be doing the polls, uh, I actually picked, <clears throat> uh, picked shows out of an fedora, true story. Uh, I took the time to write down summaries on little pieces of paper and would put them in a fedora of all things and would choose them from the fedora. I'm pretty sure I showed the fedora in one of my videos, uh, one of the first ones. I'll put a pic up if I did. Uh, but that's how some of the first videos were made. Uh, the first few videos were made, were made from, from me picking out of, and in case, this is in case I didn't find a pic, this hat right here with shows that are still in it. Uh, Love Live. Uh, interviews with Monster Girls, Haruki, Monica Magica, the first huge one I ever did, came out of this hat and I wrote summaries for it before I decided to put it on a document. And the reason why I'm mentioning this now is because one of these shows that are in here, I'm going back to this. This is the first time in a while that I'm actually going back to uh, this hat. There's still some shows in here. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because one of these shows, this piece of paper, this show is one of the first shows I ever wrote. Uh, on a line piece of paper that I put in a fedora for months. And there is a pretty good significance of this show, a show that is said to be one of the best romantic comedy anime of all time, later grown into this annual tradition where people watch it during Christmas time, and is a show that have made people laugh, cry, and become emotionally unstable when you see the ending. So here is the one, the only... Toradora. Probably can't see the paper. <laughs> Whatever. Toradora is a romantic comedy and slice of life anime that was directed by Tatsuyuki Nagai, written by Mario Kata, and was made by the studio JC staff. It came out in the fall of 2008 and consisted of 25 episodes. All right, I'm just gonna go straight into the story for this one because I am hyped to talk about this. Uh, as usual, spoiler warning, you have been warned. Let's go. Toradora follows Ryuji, a second year in high school who is often misunderstood due to the fact that his eyes make him look like a serial killer, but regardless has a really good time being in the same class with Yusaku, his childhood friend, and Minori, a girl that he has a crush on. But then enters what would be one of the most famous student arrays of all time, and that is Isaka Taiga. She is introduced as a friend of Minori and is known around the school to go off on people all the time every time she's pissed off. Uh, I almost said for no reason, but of course there's a reason in her mind. So it came to no surprise that it was, that she did the same thing to Ryuji, who not only finds out that she has a crush on his friend Yusaku, but that she lives in a big ass apartment alone right next to him. After he told Taiga that he has a crush on Minori in order for Taiga not to kill him with her big fucking long stick, the two spend most of the series trying to pair each other with the other's friend. But as they keep working with each other, rumors are going around the school that Ryuji and Taiga are dating, making their whole objective of trying to hook the other person with their friend obsolete. And even though they both agree, yeah, we're not dating, they still hang out with each other, with Taiga often going to Ryuji's house to hang out and Ryuji doing the same thing. But then inserts Amy, a young model who was transferred into the school and is a childhood friend of Yusaku who appears friendly on the outside, but on the inside is a completely huge bitch. But after Ryuji and Taiga save her from a stalker in one episode, she confesses her love to Ryuji, and eventually Ryuji and Taiga do get together, and the series then goes on a direction that I think is, in my opinion, is just too complicated for me to say word for word, let alone, for me, it would just cross the line between straight up explaining it and spoiling it. So I'm just gonna get to the review portion of the video, and I'm gonna start off with the writing, especially towards the one person who I believe gave the show the charm that everyone knows it for. As I said earlier, this show was written by Mari Okada, who also worked on shows like Black Butler, Wandering Sun, Anohana, Nagi no Asukara, link is in the description down below for that review, and recently made her directorial debut with Makuya, a movie that I believe got snubbed in the Crunchyroll Anime Awards, but if I'm being completely honest here, who really gives a shit about award shows? Her writing is why I say this is one of the best rom-com anime possibly ever, because 
all the main characters are put on the same level. There is no stuck up character. There is no character that thinks they're too cool for everyone else. There is no character that's heavily depressed compared to everyone else. Everyone is put on the same level. No one is better or worse. And Okada was able to give this trait, this feel to the viewer because she gave all these characters unique and realistic personalities. She was also able to add in character development every time there was a character interaction. Obviously the best example is between Ryuji and Taiga, as they both reveal to each other about their respective family troubles, but there was also other interactions that really made this show stand out, such as Ryuji talking to Minori, because every time that he talks to her about something serious, Minori's demeanor changes from this jumpy attitude to where at some point she just talks about absolute nonsense, to completely serious and in some some cases just completely sad. It was just a complete tone changer. Revealing to us that she has some social insecurities. Yusaku the same thing, although it's seen mainly in the beginning and the ending of the series. And my favorite is from Amy, who again shows her true self and goes away from her spoiled facade as a popular model after she stands up against a stalker that apparently has been following her for a considerable amount of time. What this does is give this show a smooth transition from a comedy to a serious show that really gets you thinking after every episode. Another thing that Okada did that really made me think twice about this show is the story. When it comes to rom-coms, anime or not, what makes most people look away from these types of shows as a whole is that almost everything that happens is too cliche, predictable, and has no solid gateway to those instances. Everything comes off as a coincidence or a misunderstanding and it's very annoying and sometimes gets in the way of the relationships that go on in a certain show. I review gamers. Uh, I don't think that's a rom-com. It's just when it came to a show completely about misunderstandings, gamers is the best example for me. But in Toradora, there's none of that. Instead, for everything that the characters did, there was always a clear motivation for it. It, it didn't become one of those things where you could guess what was going on and most of the time be right about it, just like every other rom-com. In my opinion, in terms of the music, it fits really well with certain scenes in the show, and the openings and endings really indicated what was about to happen. Uh, while all I can say about the first opening, Free Parade, uh, all I can say is it was weirdly good. Uh, the second opening, Silky Heart, really put it out there that, you know, we were getting into something serious. In this case, it was the arc where Ryuji and Taiga really developed feelings for each other, and the endings are just as good, also interpreting the same thing as the openings. Uh, I'm also gonna give it some bonus points for giving me some songs on my Christmas playlist when that time comes around. I mean, Jesus Christ, if you listen to freaking Holy Night, that that is, that, that is a modern Christmas banger right there. But at the end of the day, this was one of a very few number of shows for me where all of the episodes were memorable. It had moments of comedy, sadness, and romance, and from how I see it, this is what a rom-com should be. A show that doesn't throw the same things at you and expects you to be delighted with the result, but instead makes you rewatch it again and again on an annual basis, like some people I know during Christmas time. So with that, I recommend this show to anyone who would give it a chance, because just because it has romantic comedy in the tags, doesn't mean it's bad. Well, now that this show's out of the way, I'm going to give Toradora a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching my Toradora review video. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. If you want to see any anime review videos in the future, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down under the description right next to my channel. And if you want to see any anime review videos that I made in the past, there are some videos on the screen down in the description and down, you can click on my channel down below for more. And for that, my name is Payne, I'll see you in the next video.